In this project, I am designing and implementing a working elevator simulator for this panel. This is an old Otis panel that came out of a building in San Antonio. We recently acquired this for the elevator museum, and I figured it's about time for us to get a simulator. So this panel is seven floors. It also has added on fire service, and it has the disappearing indicator. And I made a video about how this display works, so be sure to check that out if you're curious. So before I get started with the design and building of the actual system, let's take a closer look at the panel and see what we have to work with. So at the top is the capacity plate, no Otis logo, which is kind of sad. Here's the display. Again, I made a video on this if you'd like to check it out. Here are some plates of information and the added on fire service, which has the call cancel, the key switch, and the light. Then there are the seven floors and each of these are the standard Otis push button. There is also the door close, door open, the alarm, and the stop switch, which will serve as the power for the panel. The alarm button is also going to have a working alarm. Down here in the phone door, there is no more phone, but you can see Energy Plaza. That's where this came from. There's also a small service cabinet with a few switches. We're not going to be hooking these up to anything, but these would be how you turn the light, the fan, and other things like that on and off. On the back, we can see all the different electronics. There is the indicator on the top and all of the buttons. And you'll notice here, everything is mounted to this metal frame, which this frame can actually be opened up, which makes easy access to all the electronics. Now, as for the building and implementation, you might notice that we're not at my normal workspace. And that kind of makes things a bit interesting because I have to build all the main components at my normal workspace and then bring them here to work on it. I guess let's go ahead and fast travel over to the workspace and get started on the controller. Now that the controller is built, it is time to put it onto the panel and do all the wiring. So all the buttons here are mounted to this metal frame and I can swing that open to gain access to them. I will be mounting the controller inside that frame as well. There's a lot of wiring here that I'm gonna have to take off and replace with my own. So first I need to mount the controller and there's this nice space right here in the panel for me to do that. Now we have the controller mounted and it's time to begin with the wiring. So I first hooked up the stop switch so that when you activate it, you can turn on the controllers. And you see when I pull the stop switch, the two microcontrollers come on and the relay board turns on. At this point, I need to start hooking up all of the buttons and the button LEDs to the microcontrollers. So now a couple of buttons are hooked up and I've also hooked up the LEDs. So I can test this out to make sure it works. When I turn it on and push the button, you can see that it lights up. Now I have the rest of the buttons hooked up and I can now start testing the functionality of the panel. I can use the lights on the relay board as a simulation for the PI, so I don't actually have to hook up all of those just yet. If I place a call into the panel, you'll notice that the LEDs start changing on the relay board, and that's a good thing, it is currently moving down. I can also add another floor in, you see there on number two, and this thing will make a stop on floor two. This was my first time running this software on this panel, so I'm actually pretty pleased with how this works to begin with, but later do I find more bugs that I have to work out. So at this point, most of the hardware is finished. I can now go ahead and turn on the panel and have all of the different LEDs working. 
So you'll see when I push different floors, they all light up. The last two things to do are hook up the directional lantern and the position indicator. So now the position indicator is hooked up and ready to go. If I go ahead and put a call in and look at the front, we can see that it is working. So at this point in the project, all of the hardware has been implemented except for the directional lantern. Now the directional lantern will need some custom parts, so I've got to travel back to my workspace so I can work on that. So for this lantern, I'm going to be making some custom LED holders. And to do that, I need to use my 3D printer. So I first started by taking a few measurements of this box, and then using those measurements, I created a small model file on my computer and 3D printed them. I made two of these, one for each arrow. Now with this LED, I need to add a resistor in as well, so I drilled a hole a little bit bigger so that the resistor would fit in there. And then to save space, I'm just cutting off the excess leads on the LED and the resistor and soldering them together nice and close. That allows me to just slide this in here, and you can't even really tell the resistor is there. This is the final result, and I'm pretty happy with it. All it's really left to do now is just test it out to make sure it works, and it does. Just had to adjust the LEDs behind there to center them onto the lights, but that was a nice quick and easy task. Now let's get back to the project. So I've reinstalled the lantern back into the panel, and I've added some clear tape over the LEDs to kind of spread the light a bit better, which definitely makes it look better when the cover's on. Really all that's left to do now is just put the cover back on, screw it on, and this thing is done. So I've finished all of the wiring and programming of this panel and the simulator is ready to go. So at this point, the only things that's left to do on this project is install the alarm bell, which right now that does not do anything. I've got the wires here on the back ready for it. So as soon as I get a hold of the alarm bell, I will mount it somewhere and that will be a working feature. And then of course, the last thing, we gotta get this thing from St. Louis to Roanoke to put into the elevator museum. But for now, we can do a demonstration of how this panel is going to work. So in order to power it on, you simply pull the stop switch and you'll see here that the indicator turns on. You might have also noticed that the fire hat came on for a brief second and that's just used as a debugging tool for me so I can kind of know the state of the system when it starts up. Other than that, once you pull the stop switch, the indicator comes on and this thing is ready to go. So let's start off by going to seven. You'll see after a few seconds, the up arrow turns off. Now let's go down to six. Here we are at six. We'll go to five next. And you can have multiple calls. So you see here I put in five, four, and three. Down arrow is lit. Here we are at four. And you'll see there is a delay, a pretty long delay for when it's on a floor. And you can tell when that delay is done by when the arrow turns off. So now it is in the idle state, ready to go to the next floor. So let's go ahead and return back to the first floor. Here we are at one. There goes the fan, so it just got a little bit louder in here. So this simulator does work like a regular elevator. You can hit multiple floors. It's gonna serve all of the up calls first, and then it will serve all of the down calls. And vice versa, if it has down calls first, it'll serve all the down calls, and then all the up calls after. The simulator also features working fire service. Now, it's a little bit different than it would be out in the field because there's no phase one recall, and we also don't have doors. But this version of fire service, if you turn it on, you'll see the fire hat comes on. You can choose a floor, let's say five, but let's say we decide to not go there. We can hit call cancel, go to four, Call cancel. And it works with however many floors you choose. So if I choose all the buttons, can't choose one because we're there, but if we choose all the buttons and hit call cancel, we clear it out. Now in real fire service, you would have to hold the door close button until the doors are completely shut before it'll move. Again, like I said, we don't have doors. So you just hold it for a quick second and then it goes up to two. If you have multiple calls, let's say three and four, you have to hold the door close button for each floor. Now, realistically, you would have to hold the door open button to open the doors. But again, since we don't have doors, I just made it, you just have to hold the door close button. But you see we went to three, we're sitting at three, now we can hold door close. 
and go up to four. And when you're all done with the panel, just hit the stop button and it turns off. So that is all for this project. Again, I do have to add a couple more things to this before sending it to the elevator museum. But this was definitely a lot of work and a lot of fun to do. There's a lot of time spent in the planning and building of this panel, and I had to do it in two different places, which was not particularly fun. We have a fully working simulator that is going to be a lot of fun for people to play with in the elevator museum. Hope you enjoyed this project. Thank you for watching this video, and we'll see you on the next project.